Hello, today we are solving the 11th question in the Lee Code Advanced SQL 50 list. This is team scores in a football tournament. Now the question prompt itself is uh, extremely long. So instead of reading this out to you, I'm going to show you an example of what they want. They first give us a little table called teams, which is just a list of teams in a football club. We have the ID of the team and the name of the team. So for example, team number 10 is Lee Code FC. Team number 20 is New York FC and so on. And the second table they give us is a list of matches at this football club. We have the ID of the match, the host team, the guest team. So this is the team that faces the host team. These two teams face each other. How many goals the host team scored and how many goals the guest team scored. As an example, the first match was team 10 versus team 20, which if we see here is Lee Code versus New York. Lee Code scored three goals and New York scored zero goals. So Lee Code won this game. Now, what they want us to find is how many points each team got. If a team wins, they get three points. If they tie, they get one point. And if they lose, they get zero points. Let's use match five as an example. We have team 50 versus team 30, which is Toronto FC versus Atlanta FC. Toronto scored one and Atlanta scored zero. So Toronto won. Therefore, we're going to return Toronto FC and their three points because they won that game and Atlanta FC, and they got zero points, so they will stay at zero points. As another example, the second match, it was Team 30 versus Team 10, so Atlanta versus Lee Code. They both scored two goals. That means they tied. Because they tied, Lee Code FC will get one point for that game, and Atlanta will go from zero to one. Then we want to go through every single match and find how many points each team got. In fact, our desired output will look like this. We're going to have the ID of each team, their name, so pretty much this, these two columns, and then how many points that team got from highest to lowest. So just to drive the point home, how did Lee Code FC uh, get seven points? Well, Lee Code FC is team number 10, right? So they played here against team number 20. They won three to zero, so they got three points for that game. Then they played here, it was team 30 versus team 10. They tied this two to two, so they got one point for that game. And then they played again here, team 10 versus team 50. They beat them five to one. So they got another three points for winning. Add those up together. That's how we got seven points. Now, how do we go about solving this? First things first, it's important to know what tables we need to use. We will for sure need to use this matches table to figure out who won, right? We have how many goals each team scored. So we know who won to get the number of points, but we're also going to need this team's table to return the name of the team. So we're gonna to need to join these two tables together to get all of our important information in, in one output table. However, we only need to join at the very end, right? Because we only need it for the output. So if when we wanna add the team name to our result, then we should join the teams table with the matches table. But until then, we don't need this table at all. So what we're gonna do first is figure out how many points each team got using this matches table, get all of that important information. That's the difficult part of the question. Then at the very end, we'll join these two tables to get our result. As a little example, let's see if the host team won or lost each game. We'll add a little W or L or T if it's a tie to see if the host team won, lost or tied. So the first game, it was team 10 versus 20, three to zero. So the host team won the first game. Then it was two to two. Therefore, it was a tie. Then five to one, the host team won the third game. Then the host team won the fourth and fifth game as well. So instead of returning W or T or L or whatever, we want to return how many points that team got, right? A win is worth three points. A tie is worth one. These are worth three. That way we can sum together, hey, team 10 won this one and team 10 won this one. They got three points here and three points here, and we can sum them together. That's how we can get our total points per team. So instead of just random letters, we're going to use the actual value of points. So let's make a little table here. We're going to have host team and points they got. So again, team 10 got three for the first game. Team 30 got one, got three again for the third game. 20 got three. So all I did was just take this column and this column and put them into this little table. Now we have the host team and how many points they got. Are these all the points in our table? No because the guest team could have also won or tied or lost points, right? Did the guest team win this game? No, they lost, so they got zero points for this one. The guest team tied, so they actually got one point for the second game. Team 10 got a one point here. And then in these three games, they lost all of these three, so they got zero points. So there are actually also points we need to track depending on if the guest team won or lost or tied. We could have a little table here storing 
the guest team and how many points they got for those same matches and how many points did they each get? Zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And now we have all of the possible points from our whole table. We have all the host teams and how many points they got and all the guest teams and how many points they got. But at this point, there's no difference between host team and guest team. They're both just teams, right? Team 10 got three points here and team 10 got one point here. It doesn't matter where, whether one is a host or a guest. So what we can do is just rename them from host team and guest team to just team. Not that the renaming actually matters. It was just for clarity's sake. But look at these two tables now. They essentially follow the same format. A list of team and how many points they got and a list of teams and how many points they got. So what we can do now, we can take this list of a team and their points and combine it with this one into one big table where we now have just a list of teams and how many points they got for each of their games. And getting to this part is actually 90% of the work done because now we can just sum how many points each team got, right? Team 10 appears three times. So team 10 got seven points. As another example, team 20 appears here, here, and that's it. So team 20 got three points like so. So if we sum points group by the team, so we get the sum of the points per team. We will just get team as one column, sum of points in another column. Team 10 got 70 or seven. Team 20 got three. Team 30 got one. Team 50 got three. And this is very, very close to our output. All we want to do is then add the actual name of the team as another column, fix some edge cases. But this is pretty much 99% of the question done. Now, I just want to touch on one last point. How did we even get these values like how did we even know if this if the host team won this game well we checked this column the host goals and checked to see if it was bigger than the guest goals if it was then we gave them three points if it was equal to we gave them one point and it, on the chance it was less than we would give them zero points so this result is dependent on these two columns it's conditional on the host goals and the guest goals and anytime we have a conditional column we will use a case function and how a case works is we give it a condition when some condition. So let's say if the host goals was greater than the guest goals, that would imply that the host team won, right? So we're going to say, then we want to return three, right? We want to say, Hey, then give the host team three points because they won. And if it's not, if this condition is not met, then this happens, the else condition. And what happens if host goals is not greater than guest goals? In this case, we still don't know what would happen because it could either be a loss or a tie. So we're going to have another condition when host goals, I'll just call it host, is equal to guest goals. Then we actually give them one point, right? In like in this case where this was equal to this. And otherwise, if it's a loss, give them zero points. So first we're going to create these columns, get how many points each team got using this case condition. Then we combine all the points into one big list where we can sum. So let's try it in code. First, we're going to use the case condition with our match table to find how many points each team should get. Just to recap, this is what our match table looks like. We want to have another little column at the end here that it'll be three points if the host team won and if it's a tie and zero if it's a loss. So what we're going to do is select everything. We want to return all these rows again, but then another column at the end where we have a case, the host team scored more than the guest team, then give them three points and put three in our little column, implying they won. However, the host team scored as many as the guest team. Then we want to give them one point. Otherwise they lost. And so we give them zero points and then we end the case. Let's give this whole column a name. We'll just call it points. Perfect. Ignore the red and white coloring, but this is exactly what we have. Now we want to do the exact same thing, but for the guest team, because the guest team could have also got points for these games. So we're actually going to take exactly what we have here, but in reverse. So if the guest team scored more than the host team, then give them three points. And if the guest team, I mean, this is already equal, but I'm just going to flip it around just for clarity's sake, give them one, otherwise zero. Here we go. This will give us how many points the guest team's got. So let's see what this gives us here. Pretty much, pretty much the same thing, but here we have uh, the guest team got zero points. Why? Well, they lost three zero or guest team got one point here. Why? They tied two, two and every other game, the guest team here lost. So they got zero points. And now our next step, this was our list of home team, our list of guest team and how many points they got. We want to essentially combine them into one table and get the team ID from the host team and how many points they got. 
and the team ID from the guest team and how many points they got. So let's get the host team and their points and the guest team and how many points they have. And we're going to take these tables and stick them one above the other using union. Because we want to keep duplicates, we're going to use union all, right? A team might have played multiple games. Team 10 might have played match number five and then team 10 might have also played match number three. And if we just use union, it'll get rid of duplicates and it'll only track one match per team. But using union all, it'll keep all matches even if they were played by the same team so let's see what this gives us and here we go at this point it says host team here but you can just pretend it says team because these are both host and guest teams we have a team and how many points they got a team and how many points they got another team and so on and so on both for host and guest teams and now hopefully you see why unioning the tables together was useful because we can now sum up together the points per team and then get how many total points each team has it's getting kind of messy here so let's call this table let's give this table a variable name we'll call it i don't know points table for example and put it in here this way if we want to use this table which has the whole list of uh how many points each team has we can just call points table instead of having to use that whole giant query so for example let's see what this gives us the exact same thing because this is now points table and what we're going to want to do in this table is sum the points grouped by the host team we're still going to return the team and then we're going to get how many points each team has we group by the host team what do we get and this is progress we have the idea we have the team id and then just they got seven points team 30 got one 20 got three 50 got three we're getting there there are a few edge cases now we need to look at so the first thing is they want us from most points to least points we want to order by this sum of points let's call this num points so we can order by num points because we want from highest to lowest it has to be in descending order okay there we go highest to lowest good looking at our output here let's not forget we also want to return the team name so now let's join our teams table so we can have the team name along with what we have here we're going to join our teams table how well both tables have a team id right the teams table has the id of the team and our new table we created also has the id of each team right we have the team id and then how many points that team got the team id in the points table right now in this table we have is called host team let's just call it team id for clarity's sake instead of calling it host team because it's not just host teams right it's host and guest teams therefore we can say points table dot team ID is equal to the team ID in the teams table. And because we changed this from host team to team ID, now we want to select, change this to team ID as well. Same thing here, right? Instead of the host team, we, we called it now the team ID in the points table. And now because we're joining, we can get the team name from the teams table. These are the three columns we want to return. So let's see what we get. I mean, wow, we are very close to our output. Look, we have the team ID, the team name, and the number of points. Let's see our expected output. We are very close. We are just missing this last one. Chicago FC with zero points. Why is this the case? How come Chicago does not appear in our output? Now, these are the two tables we are working with. This is our points table that we created with all the teams and all the points for each game. And then we also have the teams table, which we were given at the beginning, which has the actual uh, team name and team ID. So because we're using a regular join, because this team ID does not show up, team 40 never played a game, SQL is just deleting it, right? It couldn't find a match, so it couldn't join. However, if we use a right join in this case, because teams is our right table, it'll check team ID 40. Does the ID appear here? No. Well, still include it, but fill all of the information with blank. So we still want to have that Chicago played, but say that they have no points and that they face no team. This way, we can still include them in our output. Just to reiterate why we're using a right join instead of a left join, the first table we use is our left table, and that's the points table. And our second table is the teams table. We want to keep everything from our second table, which is the right table. Therefore, we will use a right join. Now we have Chicago FC, but null in both of these places. Why? Now, these are null for different reasons. The team ID is null because we are selecting the team ID in the points table. The points table is the list of all the points each team's had from the matches. And team 40 never played, so their ID does not show up. What we want to do instead is take the team ID from the teams table and group by the teams table instead, right? There, now we have the team ID 40 in Chicago FC. However, this is still null. The number of points they have is null. Why? Well, they never played a game, so they have no points. And we're saying sum of points. The sum of null is still null. But in the case of a team played no games, we want to give them zero points. So we will use if null, which it takes two things. It returns the first argument. But if the first argument is null, return the second one. This is basically saying 
return the sum of the points. If the sum of the points is null, if this is null, return zero instead. So this should get, help us get rid of the null in our question. Perfect. Our output matches the expected result. Before we submit, I want to mention a last final little edge case. We want to return from most points to least points, right? The like they say here, but they also say if there's a tie, then order by the team ID in increasing order. So what does that mean? Here's an example. This is what our output is right now. We're going from highest points to lowest, right? Seven, three, three, one, zero. But it said if there's a tie, if two teams have the same number of points, like in the case here, order it so that the team ID is ascending going up. So we want 20 and then 50 because 20 is smaller than 50. We're going from lowest to highest to do that. After we order by the number of points down here, we're going to order by the team ID in ascending order. And this is everything. Let's submit. Perfect. Our solution runs. This question has a lot of complicated parts. It's not easy for a beginner. So I apologize if I explained it poorly. It might take a few watches over and over to understand. But just to break it down one last time. First, we found how many points each team has, right? A win is three points. A tie is one and a loss is zero. So we did it here for the host teams. And then we did it again using the same table for the guest teams, right? Because the points they have, we can find from the same table. Once we found it, we combined it into one big table using union all. So we just have a big list of a team and how many points they got for that game. Then we call this whole thing points table just so that we can use it here. Then once we have all of this, we sum together the number of points each team has. We group by the team. This is how we get that team 10 has seven points, team 20 has three points, and so on. Then we joined the teams table so we can get the name of the team in our result as well. So we know that team 10 is Lee Code FC and team 20 is New York FC. We ordered it just like they wanted us from highest to lowest in terms of points. And then if it's still a tie, order by the team. And lastly, we handled the edge case where if a team never played a match, then they will have null points, but we don't want to return null. We want to return zero. So we use this if null command to handle that edge case. And that's everything. Thank you so much for watching.